Good afternoon, everyone. I am Chen Hu Long, and I'm going to present equilateral polygons of uh, over finite fields. Historically, there has been some interest in studying the geometric figures in finite affine spaces. In the late 19th century, there is a result about the number of affine subspaces, but it is not until recently that Wilberger demonstrated the existence of some regular polygons in particular finite affine spaces. In this current result, we present the approximate number of equilateral polygons, as well as derive exact analytic formulas for the number of triangles and quadrangles in the plane. We also provide some insights of the problem in higher dimensional spaces. A field is an algebraic structure in which the operation addition and multiplication makes sense. The familiar examples include the rational numbers, the real numbers, and the complex numbers. A finite field is a field with finitely many elements, and it al always has a prime power order. And we denote such a field with f sub q. We can define a distance operator for this vector space over a finite field, and it is just the sum of the squares of the coordinates. An L-sided polygon is a set of L vertices, A1 up to AL, with no pairs of vertices are the same, together with a set of edges formed by adjacent vertices. An equilateral polygon is a polygon in which all edges satisfy the square distance is equal to some A for some fixed A. And we can simply consider polygons with the square distance being one. Since not all elements have a square root and a finite field, we can define a quadratic character if A is a square root, then A in this character in the quadratic character returns one, and otherwise A return the quadratic character returns minus one. A unit circle in the real plane is a set of points x comma y such that x squared plus y squared equals to one. Similarly, we can define for f sub q the n minus one dimensional unit sphere in the same way. We have this following lemma called the sphere formula that states that the number of solutions has to this sphere, for, this sphere equation is this uh, expression. So it's uh, q to the n minus 1 plus some small error term. To count the number of equilateral polygons, we always let the origin be the first point of the polygon. If we assume that the points of the unit sphere are uniformly random distributed, then we have this following estimate. So here is the condition that the L points are uniformly distributed on the sphere. Here we impose the condition that the non-adjacent vertices are, uni are unique. And we also have this condition that the polygon closes up. If we multiply by the number of configurations, we obtain these, the whole estimate. By simple counting argument, the, the total number of polygons starting with an arbitrary starting point is the number of polygons starting at the origin times q to the n over l. How do we count the exact number of polygons? Well, if we have this deterministic algorithm uh, that, ha that, implies, uh, that employs a recursive depth for a search with a depth of l minus 1. So in the first step, we can we construct a sphere with radius 1 consisting of all points A2 such that the square distance is equal to 1. Uh, in the next step, we, iter we iterate over all points of the sphere, each point being a choice of A2. On each iteration, we calculate the sphere offset by this vertex, and then we, discern we descend the search from the vertex A2 to A3, iterates over the points in A3, uh, using C, N, and so on until we reach N equals to L. Uh, if we reach a vertex A, N such that A, N equals to A, M, so the, po the polygon has a repeated vertex, uh, the polygon becomes invalid, and so we discard the polygon. In the left side, we have this polygon closes up before it reaches the last vertex, and here we also have the, the polygon being invalid because it has a cycle of three vertices. 
Finally, if we check that the last vertex does indeed close up into an equilateral polygon, uh, otherwise it is discarded and we restart the search from the last vertex. After the whole search is completed, we only have to count the number of polygons in the list. Here we have the numerical figures, so we have the estimated number of polygons being the red points and the actual number being the blue points. And we see that the estimate and the counting algorithm give a consistent result because the ratio between the two tends to, seems to tend to one as P tends to infinity. We have the following proposition for triangles in the plane. So if three is a square mod P, there are four times P to the P plus one over two all floor equilateral triangles containing the origin in the plane. Otherwise, there are no equilateral triangles. So we use the sphere formula to calculate the number of points on the circle. And then we parameterize uh, the one point in terms of the other. So we have this equation in terms of B2. And then by the quadratic formula, we get two solutions by, and by symmetry, we also have two solutions for the other vertices that, dep that depends on B2. So there are two times the number of points on the circle, and then we, and then we get the following proposition. Uh, a corollary of this in uh, prime power order of finite fields is that if k is odd and three is a square mod p, there are the same number of equilateral triangles as we have in the previous case. And if k is even, then we have two q plus two equilateral triangles. Uh, if k is odd, then the proof is just similar to before. But if p k is even, we have the square root of minus one being existent in this finite field. So the sphere formula says that our q plus one solutions, and then we can do the same thing. So we can get two q plus two equilateral triangles. A regular polygon is a polygon in which all adjacent edges satisfy a b dot b c equals to b. b. Basically, this means that the internal angles are all the same. In the case of quadrangles, uh, if we have this following proposition that can pretty much be deduced like the previous case in the case of triangles. So um, we also have following results for regular quadrangles as well. In higher dimensional spaces, we might, we might assume that every vector subspace of a finite field has an orthonormal basis. This implies that we can multiply the number of linear subspaces, n-dimensional linear subspaces in this finite in this vector spaces, and then we obtain the number of m-planar equilateral polygons being this number times the number of equilateral polygons on just the plane. We also have the converse, which states that if a solution of vector equations lie on the plane, then it also lies on a vector space of lower dimension. Um, we also have uh, future directions for this investigation. So we, what are the finite field counterparts to the regular polytopes? And by changing the definition of a polytope, we, we also have some interesting questions, including some field extensions relating um, the real field extensions to a field extension of finite fields. We, in the most general case, we also have this problem of an equilateral graph. And we can ask if it is always embeddable into a finite field. If the conjecture that a graph with a dimension g has also can be also embedded into algebraic numbers, then we can modulo them into finite fields, and we can thus embed it into a finite vector space.
Thank you.